My name is Garrett Mergut. I'm the CEO and co-founder at Directive. And I am so excited to talk to you today about how to integrate your product into your performance marketing. What we're going to get to talk about today is some of the things I'm seeing in the marketplace, whether it's with our clients or with high performing companies that I want to bring to you so you can all learn and see, just like I'm learning, frankly, how do the best brands integrate their product into their lead generation? right? How do we actually do this? The challenge they're trying to accomplish is how do we integrate the product into our lead generation, right? Some of the reasons this is challenging is maybe our product isn't like needs onboarding. Well, a lot of SaaS companies are struggling with that. The truth is, is that's a pretty big roadblock in your growth. And it's also driving up your cost per acquisition, as well as decreasing your gross margin due to all the hours and resources you need in CS. We need to figure out how to do this and we can't just give up, okay? And the goal is we want to be able to decrease our prospect's time to product value. In other words, how much can we get people from landing on our website, learning who we are, to experiencing the value of our product? And the faster we can do that with as little friction as possible, the better. But we need your ideal customer to feel a magic moment with your product, okay? This magic moment is important because it's the moment where if you were to run a statistical analysis or if you ran a regression analysis or if you ran any product usage, it's the moment when someone gets to this point, we start to see a statistically significant bump in activation or in retention or in expansion. There's a magic moment for every type of goal we're trying to do, right? Hey, we're trying to drive uh, retention rate. Here's when the moment we see the highest correlation to increase retention rates is when this happens in our product. That's what I want to call our magic moment. The faster we get to that magic moment, the better off we are, okay? So what I wanted to do today, instead of getting all figurative and like, I don't know, up in the clouds with you all, I want to give you something really practical and real life examples of people I see doing this exceptionally well in exceptionally different types of ways. Now, first one's Clearbit. Clearbit is doing something very, very cool. Now, this is, I think, clearbit.com forward slash advertising. Okay. Now, it's a great product. A little segue. I'll give you guys a little information about it. The product is allowing you to take LinkedIn level targeting and then bring it to Facebook. So, like at Directive, one of the most successful campaigns we're running for ourselves and for our clients is conversation ads on LinkedIn or even newsfeed ads with $100 gift cards to take a meeting. I don't have a product, so I can't just magically get them to experience my service. So I'm creating a massive incentive to get them to take a meeting. In other words, social struggled historically because there was no purchase intent. I knew firmographically that they were the right person, but I didn't know if they were in the market for what I sold. And search is great, but struggles because you know people are in the market, but you can't control how many seats they have, what their title is, or if they're the right person. So there's kind of this gap, right? Social doesn't work because of purchase intent. Search doesn't work because of firmographics. What do you do? We well, have to increase your offer to get people from social who you know are the right people incentivized, a strong enough offer to get them to take an action. Well, Clearbit, once you got it to work on LinkedIn, allows you to get it to work on Facebook in a way that their natural targeting isn't allowing for B2B SaaS or enterprise type accounts who are really trying to target people with special firmographics. So Clearbit built this tool. It works phenomenally, big advocate of it, and it's helped change our marketing. I want you to know that. But what I love about this example is how they bring it into their landing page. Like they somehow are using their data, which is essentially a data company, right? Clearbit, to show that they have my data too. Instantly, I'm seeing that they're like legit, right? Like they've got my data and they're proving it to me on the landing page. This is a great way of overcoming, I think, one of the hardest pieces of advertising, like data, which is, is it accurate? And they're already proving it right here, right? And then the next step, it gets better, right? Like I scroll down on the page and they're showing me like how my ads would work in real time. I thought this was so, so cool. Um, and a great example of how they're using their data set plus their IP targeting, right? That they know who I am to then prove it to me and create a magic moment. And so what I want to show you guys today is what I think is the best I've ever seen 
with taking search engine optimization and product marketing and blending them together. So whoever's on this workable team, like high five to you, shout out, like you crushed this. I want to show, walk everyone through it. Hopefully get your wheels turning as well. Okay. So content marketing is hard to scale, especially for dev centric SaaS companies because they, their ideal customer persona has a base knowledge that most writers do not have. So what do you do, right? Like, how do you do this? And let's say you're workable, you're HR, right? It's a lot easier to find people who can write on interview questions and scale content. But if you've ever read like thought leadership, that's not from a thought leader, it's not thought leadership, right? And that's why a lot of our blogs don't work. Mine included in a lot of ways. Like you have to write content that's so good and so opinionated that someone's more likely to work with you after reading it than before. It's a good litmus test. Most of our content doesn't hit that. So we, we just stop. But the truth is, is there's types of content, and I call this functional content, that you can scale. Here's an exact example of it, okay? Let's see what Workable is doing. Workable is an HR software company who is helping you with applicant tracking system, okay? ATS. They know that their ideal customer persona is somebody at a company with less than 250 employees who needs help, maybe is in a spreadsheet, or is really, frankly, just lost, okay? That's their ideal customer persona. Now what they want to do is they want to be the most go-to trusted re resource to help that person's job in life be easier and better. I think I just burped. Bitch. So they took things that are highly scalable, functional, practical, and product related and created a toolkit. So job descriptions, right? Well, they organized all that because they realized that job descriptions had a ton of queries and they could recreate it in a CMS templated type way without decreasing value because it was functional. It helped their ideal customer accomplish a task. It's the best type of content in the world, in my opinion. Scalable, practical, product centric. So they built this out. Now, how they built it is what's so interesting. There's plenty of people that have these resources hubs, right? Like I have a glossary. Maybe you've got a free tool, but they scaled it, right? So 50 plus email templates, 390 plus interview questions, 700 plus job descriptions. They are taking massive market share in the HR space in a highly scalable, outsourceable way without decreasing brand value. So what does it look like, right? You jump in. And it's organized, right? So they have this beautiful subfolder layout where it's like accounting. And then within accounting, you have the different accounting job descriptions. Super scalable, really cool. But they also have this ready to hire. So you can start to see how it works right here in this moment. But you're not ready yet, right? So you click on the cost analyst job description, okay? Once again, you can still post now on job boards. The craziest part is you actually can. I know that sounds stupid, but how many of us, right, that are watching this right now have call to actions like get started that then go to like a form that an AE has to reach out to you. Like you didn't actually get started with jack squat, right? Well, this one you actually can. Fulfilling our promises on activating people into our product is crucial in marketing, okay? So then they talk about what it is, what it does, right? Very easy to outsource this research type content. From here, if you try to leave, once again, post this cost analyst job description using merge tags, once again, product integrated. So I eventually want to click on this to show you all. You click here, it has the cost analyst job description all built out, already ready to go. So who's hiring, enter your details and the real job description, and you can post this job. So think about this. We have highly scalable content aligned with our ideal customer persona, it's functional in the sense that it allows the user to take an action that integrates them to our product and is fully merged so you could. So legitimately, this is by far the best I've ever seen for SEO and product integration ever. Check it out, workable.com. Go to their HR toolkit and hopefully get inspired because I thought this was the best thing I've ever seen with kind of making organic hit a business objective with free trials in an exceptionally functional, scalable way. Now, how can we learn from these and integrate product and performance marketing ourselves, right? We talked a lot about some use cases, some specifics. Let's go through it again though, okay? We gotta understand our magic moment. Work with your product team, okay? Get access to your product analytics. 
Do your research. I'm sure you already do, but go deeper. Really understand at what moment do things change for us? At what moment does retention skyrocket? At what moment do close rates increase? At what moment do activation increase? Once you understand that, let's see if we can get that moment ungated. Let's see if we can get more people through our marketing to that moment with as little psychological friction as possible, right? Psychological friction is associated with demos, right? Schedule a demo. We've proven this over and over again here at Directive. Doesn't work. It's a lot of friction. Number two, if only our website visitor knew what X could do for them, they couldn't keep doing it the way they have in the past. If you can't get the product, like if you can't get them into the product, let's bring the product to them. The, th the concept here is pretty simple, right? Create friction only once value has been created. If you want me to do something, but I don't know what's in it for me, you got a problem, right? If you want me to request a demo, tell me how long the demo is. Tell me what my three takeaways from accepting the demo are. Maybe incentivize me to show up. Give me a gift card, some swag. Make it so it's harder for me to say no than it is or like easier to say yes than it is to say no. And then use technology to its fullest, okay? We are in 2021 now. That's crazy to say. But you do not need to do this. You do not need to ask like Zoom does right here. Like they are requesting a demo for Zoom. Like what the heck? We all use Zoom. We know what it is. Why are you giving me so much friction, right? Email address, company name, first name, last name, total employee count, phone, country, state, zip, additional... The question is, is this information for me to create a better like thing for me or is it for Zoom? And if it's more about yourself than it is your prospect, you've got a problem because you could do something like Clearbit where you just ask for an email and context and you enrich it on the back end. Cutting down fields that we don't need to ask for in 2021 is critical when it comes to increasing the integration of your product and your performance marketing to create value. So... Ideally, let's start using technology to its fullest. I came up with this concept called the one question because I really wanted to understand how do I create a customized experience for somebody to activate them? Because so what happened was we have our own SaaS product here. Well, what we found is we could get people to free trial, but we couldn't get them to become a customer because all of our marketing automation, all of our workflows, all of our messaging was generic because we didn't know who we were. We could enrich the data, but if you've ever used these data enrichments, they're not always perfect with like sub industries or titles, things like that. So I came up with this idea called one question and it drastically took our activation rate from 2% to 14% immediately because all we did was do it by role. So in this case, we'll do students, right? The very first email when you sign up now is finally the course you never got in college. Well, I couldn't say that to everybody, right? Or young professional. Want to know what it's going to take to get that promotion? In-house marketer. Ever wonder what how the other guys do it? Agency marketer, right? Like there's, there is a billion ways to do this to create the right experience, but you need to have a little bit more data. So without asking for tons of information, I just want to ask one question. What's your role? Or for directive services, what are you interested in? Because if you say SEO, I want to give you SEO content. If you say paid media, I want to give you paid media. If you don't say anything, I end up trying to juggle like, well, okay, well, let me give you an SEO article first, then a paid media one, maybe this, maybe that, and it doesn't work, okay? So let's remember the one question. I don't see almost anyone doing this, and it is mind-boggling to me because it's the simplest thing you can do to improve your trial to customer rate, period.